We've had you on before. We're going to talk cloud, uh, VP of cloud solutions uh, at HP. Um, cloud, you guys are all in on cloud. We're all in, it's all about the cloud. Yeah. So, so the question is, you know, Paul McCartney is headlining here, obviously the Beatles, and you know, our theme question is, is it let it be or live and let die for cloud services? Are you going for it? You know, it, 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 you got to go for it. This is, uh, it's not a fad. This is a secular trend, it's going to happen. You know, you look at, we're, we're, we're anticipating, we're looking at a large part of our total addressable market opportunity is going to be cloud. The, enterprise companies, SMBs are going to have to go there to create done the deal. right business. Done deal. It's a done deal, it's going to happen. It depends on, you know, it, it, are people going to take advantage of it? or are they going to get caught flat-footed? Because the people that take advantage of it, whether you're an enterprise or service provider, are not only going to be able to create more financial flexibility, but more importantly, a lot more agility, and actually enable a lot of new business models that just weren't possible before. So you've been a consultant, I you know, read your background, you were a you know, management consultant. HP's been criticized for being slow and not really kind of doing cloud right, kind of doing little pieces of cloud, and ha but having a lot of stuff in the tool chest. Here is the big splash. You guys are actually going to roll this out. We heard execution and the theme. Take us through the the plans and the big picture, the high level story around. You know, what are you what are you building here? Is a fundamentally new new transitional product, sets of products. How are you guys thinking about uh, the blueprints of the cloud services of the, in the cloud product? Yeah. So let me let me address your first point. So we have been criticized for being slow or non-present or not just on the cloud. On cloud. I mean, we're the yeah. largest IT company on the planet. So we have to be present in a couple places. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I would I would tell folks out there that we've been doing the cloud when it wasn't called the cloud. We have a very mature background. We've been doing mission critical computing in the data center, creating a much more agile, flexible environment. Our converged infrastructure that you heard Bethany talk about. Converged infrastructure is essentially the underpinnings for the cloud. So we've been on that path already. And now what we've done is we've done had a careful, methodical approach, and now, as you said, we're coming out. The timing's perfect. Timing's out, coming par. out, and you know we're coming from a position of strength. Yeah. Well, if you look at a lot of our competitors, our major competitors, or a lot of the smaller up-and-comers, they're developing things from scratch with unproven business models, or, or in many and cases, tech. tech. And they're unproven and tech. tech. And I mean, unproven there's a lot of spaces. We're, we're I mean, bringing together, I would say, market-leading technology that's existed, and we're taking, you know, we, we sometimes get criticized for not bringing, we got enough technology, but we're bringing it together into a much more cohesive integrated fabric to go address the cloud. Now, what we're doing, and, and today our, our CEO is on stage, Leo Apotecker, is we're taking a, much, a very comprehensive approach. We're not only building an ecosystem or a marketplace or an entire public cloud infrastructure, we're at the same time enabling our customers to build their own cloud and melding those things together and it all be based on the same underlying foundational technology. So he said a couple of things. He said that, um, well he said the hybrid cloud is going to be the dominant you know, Absolutely. deployment model, and the second thing he said is the HP is going to uh, announce public cloud. Um, so you, you just mentioned that you're going to enable your partners, but at the same time you guys are announcing the public cloud. Talk a little bit about that, the, the co-opetition mantra in the industry today. How, how do you expect that to shake out? Um, how do you do both? Uh, relative to some of the, 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 the cloud players today? Well, let, let's look, I, I think the opportunity is enormous. You know, depending on who you talk to, it's 140 billion, 150 billion. Just sorry, in, no, sorry, number 175. Do I hear 170? 180, 190, 190 whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> and, you know, we see our job as stimulating that market, creating a bigger pie for everybody as the largest IT company helping accelerate the move to the cloud and realizing not 140, 170, 200, 250 billion. I've seen some estimates that the total market opportunity is well close to 300 billion. The whole market will be cloud. Yeah, the whole I mean, cloud I mean, I think, I mean, at this, at this point, you're going to throw away all the numbers because stop analyzing. It's huge. It's, it's, it's gigantic. It's, it's just it's just and when you factor go, everything yeah, in. Go. So to your point of, we're, we look at our job as helping mature the market much faster so people can take advantage of it, making the pie bigger and, and giving not only ourselves, but our partners, our customers, an opportunity to take advantage of that. For example, uh, people can look at uh, you know our launch of a public cloud as direct competition to service providers or other cloud providers. There will always be co-opetition out there, but the way we look at it is we'll be collaborating with our partners today and helping them take advantage of the cloud in, in multiple ways. 
providing them with the means to go to market with their services through HP, yeah, uh, yeah. providing them with greater services and a greater portfolio for them to go sell. Now, Dave and I were talking. We, Dave and I were talking about that. If, if HP tries to screw up the partnership equation in their business model, it will. It's just too dangerous. It's too big. The supply chain's big, and you get great partnerships that are fundamental to the business. So, so totally, totally good, good formula. The, mo the model needs to be open, and that this whole idea, what Leo was talking about, was an open marketplace, where not only will we provide our partners so-called service providers to resell our services, but also to utilize our marketplace to sell their wares. Totally open, yeah, 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 yeah. different stacks, not only well, that's webOS. The, that's the sizzle, the sizzle is openness and you know cloud marketplace, that's some nice sizzle, but let's talk about the steak, the meat on the bone, the platform, and some of the white spaces opportunities that the competitors don't have. Or, let me say, the, the, the core tech that you have in cloud, and where are the white spaces for developers and where is the competition lacking? You mentioned some don't even have uh, solutions. So can you talk about the, kind of the, 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 the sizzle's cool. Steak is kind of like, okay, where's the meat on the bone? Well, so I can give you some examples. Um, not only are we going to develop this complete cloud stack from infrastructure to uh, platform services for developers to cloud services to the open marketplace, which is unique in itself. There isn't anybody on the planet that has the capabilities to develop that whole stack, as well as keep it open and provide a, uh, you know, an ecosystem thought process in place. But we're at the same time going to utilize exactly the same technology, full stack, HP end to end, remaining open if a customer chooses not to use ours, and use that to help our clients build private and hybrid clouds on premise which many of them will choose to do because it makes sense it's economically, a great first step compliance, too. security, yeah, and so forth. Feel, it feels better. Yeah, you know, I mean, got everybody's data got data. a different level of maturity. Yeah, yeah. So we see this as a broad HP providing a complete comprehensive solution regardless of where you find yourself in the ecosystem. So you kind of got the four horsemen of the cloud. You got Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook, right? That's the sort of household names. Do you see um, HP as you know, being one of those household names someday or is that just a different business? I see HP being broader and deeper to a certain extent. If you look, we, we like to look, I like to look at the cloud from my perspective and I run, you, you can categorize what I do is I run the build side of the HP strategy, helping clients build a private, a hybrid or public cloud. When I look at the cloud, I look at it in three segments. There's enterprise customers that are going to build a private or a hybrid cloud. There are service providers that are going to build a public infrastructure to deliver infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Then there are what, for lack of a better name, independent clouds. Uber clouds that, you know, on a massive scale, that do a very small number of things extremely well. And then you can look at the Facebooks, the Bings, the Yahoos, the, you know, so forth. And so we, you know, I, you categorize the, the, the numbers that you, or the names that you just, into that, that last category. Well, we're trying to take a much broader view with our capabilities to bring that entire ecosystem together and fatten the pie. Yeah, I've made the observation a number of times, John, that those guys that Steve's mentioning, you know, it's a single app optimized for 100 million scale. or a yeah, million scale. people, it's huge. right? Okay, versus IT, which is, hundreds or thousands of apps for 10,000 people. And they're built from the ground up, those other guys. So like the yeah. Facebooks and the Zingas, they're building from scratch. That's right. A clean sheet of paper. They're not, they don't have legacy multi-vendor issues, complexity, capacity issues. So those are different worlds. And, and, and so the hybrid cloud that you're envisioning is actually still a different world, isn't it? Um, or, is it or is it mashing together these two different business models? Well, you know, actually, if you put the, the build side away for a second, and you look what HP's going to do from a public perspective, we're going to provide, as you go up from that stack, from that infrastructure, platform services focused on, on the developer community. Yep. So multiple stacks, name your stack, there'll be different development tools, different platform as a service offerings. There'll be cloud services. Those cloud services will target consumer, SMB, and enterprise. So if you look at some of the comparable solutions I might want, you know, in a category as you just mentioned, they only take a piece of that. Yeah. We're going to try and bring that all together, but we're actually going to try and become a facilitator and broker for those folks as well. So we could act, you know, we could white label out in. It's a rising uh, tie too. If you look yeah. at all the things, we were at SAP Sapphire, and it was kind of a similar thing, big battleship company that has moved, can't move that fast, moving pretty fast like HP, and they have existing businesses and legacy. So they're saying, you know, hey, we want mobility, and the clients, their customers want that too. So, you know, the, the Siki Gunta from CSC, who's on the services side, she's agreeing with you, like, hey, cloud's been around. No one's really, it's all been, the, all those computer people have been doing cloud. So, 
cloud is disruptive. So my final question is, how are you going to see the services business evolve? CSC, the big consultancy, to the boutiques. There's a lot of boutiques that grew out of the cloud business that now are expanding rapidly the new school. So obviously the economics are different. There's a lot of money to be made on the services side. So, and there's innovation. So what's your view on the services, the innovation, is it disruptive? We're, who's weak? What's the weak areas and strong areas? I, I mean, if you look at services, it's a wide spectrum from consulting to design to implementation to support, then you actually put the, the, the IT as a service wrap around it. Every one of those services companies that's in that, whether you're a VAR, reseller, outsourcer, system integrator, or, or a big service, you're, you're getting into IT as a service. So everybody's looking at evolving their business models. The interesting thing is that cloud gives everyone an opportunity to do that. You know, the, you know, the way I pitch it to service companies is, the cloud is a, is a leveler. It really provides an opportunity to evolve your business model where that opportunity didn't evolve before. Now, there's a lot of companies that may not ride that wave, and then as we talked about before, I think they're going to get left behind. The traditional business may not last you know, for the long haul. I know we have to wrap, John, but I have one final question for Steve. And we've seen you know, a lot of high profile hacks. Uh, you mentioned Lockheed Martin, you know, several others. Um, is security a do-over, in your opinion? Meaning a rewrite, new paradigm? Is it, is, is it Se security is fundamental to the cloud, but it's fundamental to IT. Um, and, and people need to look at it, it is interesting. Is there a silver bullet for security? Absolutely not. If you think, you know, if you go out and pontificate that you're secure, you're probably not, you've probably already been violated. So people need to step back, make sure they understand the vulnerabilities in their, in their environment, and give it the best shot they can. I think security will evolve as we go forward and become stronger, more pervasive, and provide a level of protection that probably people can't envision today, but will you ever get to a point where you're secure? I don't think it's ever going to happen. You're just going to have to plan for an attack and then deal with it in a rapid fire in you know, kind of a zero day, zero day approach. Okay, Steve, thanks for coming inside the Cube again. Alumni, we're going to put you on the list of multi-cube <laughs> attendees. Thank you so much. Good, uh, great You're to see you welcome. again. Thank you very much. We are very live well. in Las Vegas.